Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Hussain. And so <clears throat> now we'll basically in this session, we'll start uh, with some hands-on. So let me first uh, share my screen. Just one second. Um, just a second. Um, can you see? Now, uh, now we see it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is basically, um, so this this uh, presentation has been shared now with Hussein, so he will upload it uh, at a later stage. So this is a combination of both. Uh, this is basically a hands-on session. We will basically solve based on what we are, uh, we'll at least go through how to basically develop your own thing in Pluto. And then I have about two to three problems for you so that you can basically work out and the solutions and everything are given so. So that we get some confidence in using Pluto code. So this will be a session which will be like 10 to uh, 20, 30 minutes long where we will just solve two of the problems and the rest couple of them you can actually solve it in the session that is tomorrow as an homework uh, so that you can actually understand how Pluto works. Right, so um, I hope everyone has kind of got this Pluto thing running. So what I will do is, is uh, um, I will actually uh, put this and on the side by side, I will actually put my terminal so that it's very easy. Um, um, is it visible, the terminal? Yes, it's, it's visible. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right. So, everyone should have this Pluto directory, which is basically the main Pluto directory. And there you basically have an SRC folder, which, so here you can see all the different folders that you have, the config doc, um, um, lib, uh, SRC, test problems and tools. So these are the different problem, uh, the folders that are existing. So this config folder basically consists of all the machine architecture dependent files. That is where, what you choose when you choose the make file. So I can um, go to config and show you that there are all these files which are the definitions file. So for example, if I you want to use a Darwin GCC setup, all these are already inbuilt. And this is the list that you see when you want to create make file. Then essentially you have a document directory, which is all the documentation is there in HTML and, uh, and user guide format. PDF format, you can always use it. Then you have a lib folder, which is for Chombo, which is not required in this case. Then you have uh, an uh, SRC folder, which is basically the whole, the code, the, the complete code. It's a huge code, is about 80,000 to 90,000 lines. Um, uh, then you have essentially tools, which are like the additional tools to do visualization, which is Nuplot, IDL, Mathematica, Python, PyPluto, and so on and so forth. And then you have a suite of test problems, which is basically where we will be focusing. So right now you have uh, HD, MHD, Particles, RHD, and RMHD. So these are the different things. We will be focusing mostly on HD, uh, mostly on MHD, but some HD parts so that it's you are clear. So let us take the first test problem, which is a talk to you problem. This is a, a problem which I think uh, Professor Clay also worked, uh, thought about or discussed. So as I said, uh, we should basically now go into CD test problems, HD shock tube. So uh, this is not correct. So this is HD and then sort. So this is basically the sort problem. So you can go into cd dot dot uh, so test problems hd sort right 
and when everyone is here, now what you can do is that you can do Python Pluto div setup.py. That is exactly what you do here. Python Pluto div setup.py. This is the something which you should do. And when you click on it, it will run and create this kind of thing. Setup problem, change make file, auto update, save setup, quit. This is exactly what you should get. And uh, now what I do is I just press enter for the setup problem. So you have HD, uh, so basically just one second, uh, we go back, sorry. What I suggest you to do is that you copy uh, definition 03.h to definitions.h. Just copy this and then Pluto 01.ini to Pluto.ini. And now you do again this thing. Now set a problem. Yeah, so well, it, it is slightly different than um, what is there, but it's okay. So it's HD. Dimension is one. Components is this. We can change it if you want. Deconstruction, if you want linear. So left and right keys, you can change. Linear, and if you want Hancock, then you can go to Hancock. Yeah. So there are many various things, various time stepping approach. So there's something called Hancock. So just to be consistent with this. And then um, you have the user defined parameter zero. You can choose zero, no problem. Then tracer, that's it. And and yes, and then just press enter. Then you will go into the next state. So this is basically the HD is a physics module. Tell the Pluto the equations we want to solve. This is the dimensions and uh, dimensions and vector components. And you can select the geometry, which was Cartesian. And then these are the, some additional things which are there. Reconstruction and time stepping methods and basically how do you do the reconstruction number of passive scalars and number of user defined runtime parameters. So in this case, uh, um, these are all the various things that you can give. Then you go to the physics menu where you have the select the equation of state. Uh, you can select the equation of state uh, AOS, US. Then you, if you want to solve the entropy equation on no, so on and so forth, thermal conduction, viscosity, rotating frame and so on and so forth. So these are, um, this is the thing. So we can just, just go, nothing to be added and then enter. And as I said, it goes into the make file menu. So it, this is slightly different. It is generated from a different uh, computer. Um, so this is uh, basically, a, and what uh, what I have a Mac uh, thing. So I basically go with Darwin GCC. People who have Linux, they can go for Linux GCC. If you have uh, MPI CC, you can do MPI CC, but this is a simple problem which you can do it with GCC also. So just use a uh, simple Linux.gcc if you have a Linux machine. So I've used Darwin because it's the machine that I have is um, is Mac. Okay, so that's it. And then this is the thing, and then you just quit, right? And then you and uh, then you go here. So you basically, what it does is it creates these two files here. Um, it creates one file which is called a make file which was not existing before in your in your folder so this creates the make file now let us look at the init function um so we, i can look at the init function this is very similar to what i have here um so this is the init function you can see the init uh, this is the code init.c and this is basically uh, in the presentation um you can see this is the same thing you have whatever what needs to be defined in the sort queue problem is that on the left hand side so when uh, when you have x1 less than 0 0.5 the density is 1 and pressure is 1 but if it is more than 0 0.5 then the density is 0 0.125 and pressure is 0 0.1 and the velocity it's a 1d problem as a, as we discussed and the velocity is 0 okay and the gamma that i have chosen is 1.4 for a diatomic gas Okay, so this is basically an equation of state is ideal, and this is exactly what you do. That's it. Uh, you don't need to change this, so you can save it. And the last file that you would like to change is Pluto.ini. Okay. So Pluto.ini, if I basically go here. Okay, so the Pluto.ini can be changed here. So if I want to be consistent with, so this is basically, 
a simple 2D setup, but at least we keep it 1D. So, okay, this is important here. So in the Plut in Pluto.ini, what you do is basically the grid information is given here. So for example, uh, as you see, my grid is in the X direction goes from zero to one with 400 cells in between and a uniform grid spacing. So you basically inform uniform. I can put stretched or logarithmically expanding and so on and so forth, but right now it's uniform. The second and third grid do not have any cells because you have it just as one cell by default, which basically means that this is a 1D um, calculation. This is just 1D calculation. Okay. So this is basically just um, 1D calculation. Uh, this is for Chombo. You don't worry about it. So here is the T-stop. I'm running the T-stop up to um, 0 0.2. And this is a CFL number. This is 0 0.8. This is T stop, which I'm running to 0 0.2. Okay, solver I can choose I can choose rho or HLLC or HLLD. Um, in this case, uh, you, HLLD will not work because it's it's an hydro. HLLD only will work for MHD. So let us choose rho, which is a much more uh, much more sophisticated than, uh, than HLLD also. So X1 beg and X2 end, uh, X1 end, this is where you have, so it's an outflow, outflow boundary condition. The other boundary conditions don't matter because it's just 1D. There's no user variable. Yeah, and I'm and there are no parameters. And I'm saving, so since it's ends at 0 0.2, I'm basically saving, let's say, 0 0.1. So I will have two data files, and let me write the log every one step. Okay, so I will have two data files, one with uh, data dot, so the initial will be data dot zero 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 dot dbl and there'll be data dot zero zero one dot dbl and then finally data dot zero zero two dot dbl because this will basically save every zero point one time and you run it for zero point two times okay and that's it so you can change this parameter and save that's it and then you just basically Yeah, so it's made, and now you can see that there are all these .o files that are created, and most importantly, you have created this executable Pluto, which you need to run. Okay, and this Pluto, you can, as I said, it's always good to basically check. Um, uh, in this case, LDD will not work because it's a Mac command, but uh, usually in Linux it works LDD dot Pluto, and it will actually uh, work fine. So uh, now what you do is you basically just have to run Pluto, local machine, serial run, parallel run. If you're doing parallel, MPI run minus MP or MP execute. And you just run. It runs. And basically it runs up to 223 steps quickly, immediately. And these are all the steps you have. And you can see that when the time has become 0 0.1, it is saving a, a file. And then it keeps on going, 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 and then it saves another file. Okay, so this is basically it took absolutely no time uh, to solve this problem. Um, and you can see it each time. So basically, we can go from the front. So it basically says, okay, Pluto version 4.3, user Darwin, this all these things information. What is my header information in the definitions? What it is basically, and then my grid information. And then um, uh, density, pressure, this is unit if you have defined. But otherwise it's fine. It says number of process one, process size 400 cells. And then it goes on to say this. So this is step. This is the time at that step. This is the DT. That is what is a time step. It has been determined from the CFL condition. And this is the maximum MAC number that has been achieved in the simulation box. Okay, so, and this is the, uh, is like a progress, how much it goes. So essentially you will see now, you have a few out files, most important are dbl.out and grid.out. So if I, so I think, um, yeah, everything is fine. So when if it comes here, it's everything is fine. Right, so uh, now what we do is we can open, um, so we can open, um, 
just to show you how dbl.out is. So you can see dbl.out, this is the serial number 0, 1, 2. So data 0, data 1, data 2. And this is a time at which the data is written. So this is basically initial time. This is at 0 0.1, that is what we are requested. It will be close to that and 0 0.2, that's the last step. Okay, and this is basically the time step DT at that particular time. This is the step number. So 124th step, 234th step. Yes, then we have used single file. So this in, uh, information can be changed from Pluto.ini where we have used single file here. If I use multiple files, then it will write separate um, a separate file for each uh, parameter. So this is single file. You can again go back to double dot out. This is an NDM, uh, the way we write the, uh, uh, the binary format. So it's a little NDM. And these are the variables in which it is written. So there are only three variables. That is row, VX1 and PRS. Row, VX1 and PRS. Row, VX1 and PRS. That's it. Okay. So these are the three, um, three things which are uh, written down. And uh, and you have uh, all this information dbl dot out. This all the timing information, and then you have the grid dot out. The grid dot out basically has okay. It, in each direction, what is the grid? So this is 400 points, and these are all the 400 points that are there. And the 400 points, this tells you the left edge and the right edge. Okay, so this is basically the left and the right edge of the cell. If you take addition of these two and divide by two, you get the cell center. So the left edge starts from zero and goes up to one. So uh, at the very end. So each cell, there are 400 cells and each cell has a left edge and a right edge. And these are basically the left and the right edges of, the, um, of that thing. So this gives all the information, the grid and everything is uh, available. Now, I don't know people who are using GNU plot. Um, I have everything over here. Um, you can try it. Um, I don't use GNU, GNU plot. Uh, so, so people who are familiar with GNU plot can use this. What I use is basically PyPluto. So uh, usually I do the IPython file app and it opens a PyLab window. And then I do import PyPluto underscore v3. So this is the a new version which you already have. So just the uh, format is import PyPluto underscore v3 uh, dot preload as pp. And then you can do the um, preload zero. So this will basically just uh, get the single data file. Now, what I can do is I can plot p dot x one and d dot row. Yes. So you can see over here that this is x, and as as defined in our initial condition, if x is less than zero point five, then its value is one. If x is greater than 0 0.5, its value is 0 0.25. So this is basically 0 0.125. So that's how my density is. And if I overplot it with pressure, the way to do it is d dot prs. So this will give you pressure. d dot prs vx1 and it will give you pressure. So this is the, the pressure and it goes up to 1 and 0 0.1. So that's you can see. And then you can see d dot vx1. By definition, it is 0. This is because this is the initial conditions that we have given. So this is like a verification of the initial condition. Okay. So this tells you, you always can verify your initial conditions, how it is been basically given. Right. So, um, so now uh, let me close all of this. So I can plot now the row. This is the initial condition. And now what I'll do is I'll basically have one more time step. So this is the intermediate time step, and then I can plot the row again. Now you see your solution from a discontinuity has changed. Now remember that this is a, a this is a hydrodynamic uh, calculation, so it doesn't have all seven speeds, but it has only three speeds. This discontinuity 
is essentially called the contact discontinuity. It moves with the contact uh, speed. So that is essentially the U which you give the velocity along the X direction. This is a fast shock or this is a shock, sorry, supersonic shock. This moves with U plus CS. Okay, so in, in hydrodynamics, uh, when you are in uh, ideal hydrodynamics, you have three waves, U plus CS, U minus CS and U. So this is moving with U. This is moving with U plus CS and this rarefaction wave is backwards moving with U minus CS. So you have three different waves uh, splitting up. So now you can see slightly more how this splits up by going into the next time step. Yes. So again, this is basically a shock which is moving with U plus CS, supersonic. This is a contact discontinuity. It is moving here and this is basically the, uh, the rarefaction wave. Now, how can I say this is a contact discontinuity? Because if I plot the pressure, if I plot the pressure at the last step k, you can see that across the density is jumping here, but the pressure is remaining constant. So this is a definition of contact discontinuity. And there is, of course, a rarefaction wave. And the pressure is jumping at the shock. So this is a contact discontinuity. This is a pressure uh, jump, density jump, and this thing. You can see also the velocity is constant. It doesn't change across the contact discontinuity, but it jumps across the shock. And of course, changes at the rarefaction wave. So this is how you can actually understand the solution of a sort tube, which is a standard sort tube. There are, of course, MHD sort tubes are there. So people who are interested, they can actually uh, look it up. So this is, this is how it looks like. There's a forward moving shock. There is a contact discontinuity and a rarefaction wave. So these are the important aspects that you actually get. Okay. So this is uh, typically how you start and, 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 and load data and start visualizing this data. Right. So now um, uh, maybe uh, what I can do is uh, I can basically stop here. And if, I, if you have any questions, otherwise I will just um, go ahead with another problem. So maybe if you have any other questions, then we can stop here. Okay, thank you very much for this wonderful lecture. So I personally enjoyed it a lot. So I'm wondering if anybody has a question. So if you have a question, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, if not, then if not, then I will go ahead slightly. But are are you are everyone able to at least um, uh, get the code running? I don't know. So okay, <laughs> they supposed to do that. So okay, I'll leave. Uh, thank you very much, Bhargav. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to mention that uh, I uploaded uh, the files that you sent to me, those three PDF files, on our repository, and uh, it is now uh, available on our repository. And if our participants just scroll down uh, this uh, public chat, they can download it from uh, our GitHub. So. Um, we will advertise these uh, lecture notes uh, tonight to our audience too. So, uh, uh, so maybe we have a question here. We can have a history of commands. Yes, you can have the history of commands if you wish to. Uh, I can copy paste. Uh, and, uh, so I, I think what you need is basically just, uh, just this part so that you can actually reproduce it. I'll just copy paste it here for everyone's benefit and uh, everyone can have a look at it uh, in the in the chat so that, that that's about it uh, for for the for this thing and then uh, people who have done some Pluto uh, or some Python they can actually do all sorts of um, uh, this thing which you can learn and and do it uh, but just um, uh, Hussein, uh, if I can share for like for next five seven minutes so that I can explain their homework or at least um, what they want to do, maybe if yeah, it's okay. yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so I uh, just just let me tell you, uh, if if you have any question, you may write it here, 
and yeah. we share it with uh, Dr. Vida or uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, if you want to ask it through your microphone, that would also be great. So, uh, Dr. Vida, please continue and uh, give us our homework. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Right. Um, We now see the screen. Yeah, okay. So now, um, so this is the second example that uh, I was discussing. It's mostly MHD blast wave. Okay, so I would suggest that uh, what you can do as a part of your example, because there are multiple problems and all the problems solutions are also given here. So my suggestion is that you can start with uh, 2D MHD blast wave and go step by step um and 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 creating your own problems or 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 stuff like that and just follow these steps and you will be able to then uh, because the idea over here is that in a mhd blast wave uh, the idea is that you need to actually introduce a spherical blob with very high pressure at the center of the grid and you basically have a plasma beta parameter which is essentially a and that you can give as user different input parameters <clears throat> and 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 you can consider so this is basically a schematic of uh, of the blast wave and the way to do it is that um, you can define input parameters p in and beta and you can get them over here so this is just to um, this is how it is uh, the init init.c for mhd blast so all these are all the solution is given for you. So you can actually uh, write your own thing. The important part is that if you are given input parameter name, which is here, so you can give this two in user defined parameters two, which was zero in the last case. You can define any of them like p in and beta, and then you can use that p in and beta over here in your init dot c like this with g input param p in and g input param beta. The advantage is that when you if you want to change this parameter very frequently you will not have to change your init function you can only change your pluto dot ini function as i'll show you so this is basically the init file where you have um, the square root of r as a like a radius defined and then you can define your outside condition which is the rho velocity zero pressure as one over gamma and if my radius is less than 0 0.1 means at the center I basically have a very high pressure, which is Pn. Then I define my magnetic field strength based on the plasma beta value. So plasma beta is thermal pressure over magnetic pressure. And uh, one can show that this is it's uh, it's basically equivalent to um, uh, 2P over V squared. So uh, in, in code units. And, and that's what I have written here, the B naught squared. And what I'm choosing is basically a magnetic field along x-axis, constant magnetic field along x-axis. Okay, this is something what you can choose. Now remember that when you choose a constant magnetic field along x-axis, by definition, your um, divergence of V is zero. So that is very important. Your initial condition should be such that the divergence V has to be zero. Otherwise, there is no scope. I mean, there is, it, the, the initial condition is not consistent with physics. So that has to be very clear. Um, so this is B, bx1 um, is, is a constant field, so it's, a, uh, it's basically um, divisions of B0. Then you can define the grid, which is a 2D grid from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And you can use a solver, HLL, and all these aspects. And um, you can basically um, solve this problem at the very end. So you can compile and run, and essentially you will get this... Um, blast wave uh, setup uh, running so people can do these kind of blast wave problems and 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 set up uh, to understand um, and visualize and see see how this thing works okay so this is one one test second test is what you can do interesting is that you can change your beta parameter so in your pluto dot ini you can change the beta parameter from 100 to 1 so initially what we have put is and a beta is 0 0.1 uh, and you can change it to 100 you can change it to 1 and you can change it to 0 0.1 and then you can explain 
what is happening uh, with the, with your simulation so uh, what will happen if you have very very strong fields so when you have beta very small that means you have very strong magnetic fields when you have beta very large you have very strong magnetic fields so what really happens to the blast wave you can actually understand by changing this beta parameter so this is something you can try on your own and uh, another example that we have we can, you can try is the kelvin helmholtz instability which we were discussing so this is an instability which you see also in jupiter hotspots and and earth's magnetic field and so on and so forth so this is something which you can actually simulate with pluto um so uh, the way to do it is that you actually have to have a vortex sheet it's going in the plus and minus uh, m by 2 and m by two. so some you put some velocities going plus and minus and then you can actually perturb the system so this is slightly more complex uh, perturbation and you can actually uh, study this uh, growth of instability um, uh, in this manner so um, uh, again uh, all the solution is given so you can change all the information here so test problems kelvin helmholtz and you can define this or everything is given here in the how to write the init.c and you can work out um, all the aspects uh, everything is given kelvin helmholtz vortices are formed but what is interesting is that now what you can do is you can study the evolution of instability without magnetic field that means va equal to zero and then you can identify the linear phase and transition and you can measure the growth rate of instability or you can increase the magnetic field strengths where va varies from zero to one and confirm that the instability is suppressed so this is another interesting thing because the magnetic fields the the there is a suppression of kelvin helmholtz instability so that you can actually verify in this case and then what happens if you basically so in this case you can see the magnetic fields are essentially kept um, in the xz plane okay and and theta you can choose but then you can basically make it perpendicular so instead of along x axis you can make it along y axis and then you can see what really happens to the uh, to the evolution of kelvin and what else. so these are two things you can do you can also play the same with relay taylor everything is everything is given you can basically work out all the aspects and you can verify certain certain things here so everything is given to you so maybe this is basically what i would suggest you as homework uh, so these three problems you can actually take it up and all the things are shared with you so i hope um, you should be able to work it out on your own thank you so much for your time and uh, and it was very nice um, have uh, a very very nice interaction thank you i'll stop sharing the screen thank you uh, and let us all thank uh, our speaker dr bhargav vaida from indian institute of technology indoor uh, this was very very great i loved your talk and we hopefully uh, will uh, just share uh, the video lecture of yours on YouTube and of course on Apparat which is available in Iran. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> thanks again and uh, let me just uh, tell our audience that we will be here tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You may play with Pluto this uh, very great code and if you wanted to discuss your solutions or if you had any problem we, uh, we will be available tomorrow at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock iran uh, local time so uh, let me thank you again uh, thank again you uh, bargav and have a great time uh, i think uh, one question is there from uh, yeah yeah uh, sorry i didn't know that works in windows 8 uh, yes, um, uh, we just, you just need a CE compiler in your window, uh, Windows 8 thing. So if you use, um, I think, uh, um, this uh, the shell is there, the C shell. I mean, there are these uh, putty programs are there, which you can use in Windows. If you can run it, yes, it will work perfectly fine. I'm sorry, but I'm more of a Linux and a Mac person, so not much of a help. But definitely it works in Windows 8. You just need a C compiler. I think someone may, uh, would be able to help you out.
Yeah, yeah, me, yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you so much. Wonderful. That's that's exactly the the software that you can use uh, to to do C compiling in Pluto. So thank you, everyone, and uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Hussein. Thank you, Neda. Thank you, Sara, uh, for all the help and uh, all the support. It was wonderful. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you, Bhargav. Have a great time. We now close uh, our talks for today. Tomorrow we'll see you here at 10 o'clock. Thanks Thank all. You. Have a good time. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.